It's a privilege to present this exhibition entitled Ruth Weisberg Touchstones. There's always a temptation to show Ruth in retrospective mode because the works are always contextual. They refer to both history, personal history, art history, and different aspects of the arts. But Ruth isn't merely reacting to works of art that preceded her. She's engaging them, somehow interrogating them in some instances, and placing herself, her friends, her family in those works. She's not copying works, but they are points of departure. Indeed, works are often titled similarly to points of departure. We see, for example, in 1999, she was inspired to create a, an entire body of work commissioned by the Huntington Museum to create a body of work inspired by one in their own collection. She was the first contemporary artist ever to be afforded a solo exhibition at the Huntington Museum and created this incredible work inspired by William Blake. We have in this exhibition two works that relate to that show, indeed included in the exhibition. The key work in that exhibition was a work that was 12 feet tall by 23 feet wide. Obviously we can't present that here, but we're delighted here to give an opportunity for collectors to even be informed of such a remarkable occasion. Nine years later, the Norton Simon Museum afforded her the same privilege, the first living painter ever to be given a solo exhibition. And we see here the painting by Ruth Weisberg entitled The Blessing, inspired by Guido Cagnacci. And here's a perfect example. Cagnacci's painting deals with a protest, a, an admonition about vanity, and Ruth turns that into, rather than a shaming, turns it into a blessing and creates a point of departure in creating an entirely new image and it's presented here. Here we see Cagnacci's work rebuking Mary for her vanity and Ruth Weisberg in turn turns it on its head places herself in the painting, as she often does, because these are conversations, these are paintings that had an impact and set the imagination free. Within this painting now, it's populated by family and friends, and Ruth places herself both as offering a blessing and another figure in the distance. To speak of Ruth's importance as an artist is rather clearly noted by the fact that she's had more than 80 solo exhibitions and more than 200 group exhibitions. Her works are represented in more than 60 museum collections internationally. But as an artist in Los Angeles, her history has been really profound, as it has been internationally. She's a professor for many years at University of Southern California and indeed was the longest tenured dean in that institution's history. She is basically responsible for the Roski School of Fine Arts even existing under that name. Ruth was also the only the second woman to be the president of the College Art Association, the largest body of scholars and educators internationally. Her importance to the women's movement as an inspiration, not only by way of protest, but by way of example, has been profound. She, along with Judy Chicago, were the first artists ever to have solo exhibitions at the Women's Building in Los Angeles. She sets an example for artists in every discipline but particularly in the advancement of women artists. She did this not in protest, but by through example. And I think that's a remarkable attribute for any artist.
In this painting entitled Reading Corot, we really get great clues as to the origins and development of Ruth Weisberg's works. As a young girl, she had the privilege of going to the Art Institute of Chicago, and from the age of six to 16, imagine 10 years of studying and uh, taking some training at the Art Institute, she fell in love with this painting in the collection by Corot entitled Interrupted Reading. Years later, that painting remained as a favorite painting, but things evolve and she became intrigued with things such as the fact that f here's this French painter, Corot, after traveling to Italy, comes back to Paris with a collection of costumes of Italian peasants. Ruth's interest in theater converges with her reminiscence of this painting and in looking at her own daughter, her own interrupted reading, she somehow dovetails these two dynamics into one work of art. So works of art had their impact and remained with the artist, but Ruth is not copying them. She, they become dialogues and remain with her throughout her career. All the works on this wall relate to that. And in this work entitled Point of Departure, we see Ruth Weisberg engaging this notion of interrupted reading and she's really confronting the painting, questioning it. So these works of art that she has so admired throughout her lifetime act as both friends, protagonists, they become points of departure as is the title of this work. Throughout the 1970s in particular, Ruth devoted herself almost exclusively to lithography. She's a remarkable lithographer, and here we have this example, this masterpiece in lithography with these nuances, these touche effects, these wash colors, which are so difficult to control. And this critically important and exceedingly rare work was one of the icons of the era in the advancement of women's art. It was a, an icon of the women's movement, in fact, in the West Coast. Here we see a self-portrait of Ruth, who soon was to give birth to her first child, floating in this fetal position. Not only the emergence of motherhood, but the emergence of womanhood, and symbolically was so critical in that era. In this extraordinary lithograph, we see the virtuosity of Ruth Weisberg, who's so taken with the washes and the effects of lithography that it really impacted the way she approached painting through stains and veils of color that really evoked memory. The convergence here of art forms is really so telling. We see a figure that evokes a painting by Watteau, a figure of Watteau, and pulling back the curtain to reveal a climactic scene in a 1940s, mid-40s film entitled Children of Paradise that was filmed during the Nazi occupation of France. Remarkable that it was even able to be achieved. And so here we see both art, history, film history, and personal history coming together. Her fascination with film is shown here even with her most recent work, a film entitled Brief Encounter from the mid-40s, a British classic. So this continuity in her fascination with other art forms and how it impacted her is really paramount to this body of work. Born in Chicago, Ruth often was cognizant of the fact that had she been born elsewhere, specifically in Germany in 1942, what that history would have presented. Her reflections on historic occasions such as the Holocaust takes on not through anger and revolt, but through poignancy and reflection. That is actually the underpinnings of the entire body of the work not only her reflection, but the reflections of her viewers to contemplate works of art that they have seen and how they impact them and carry them with them. In the work such as Together Again, Ruth 
is reminiscing not only about her own childhood friends, but those that she might have had had she been born in Germany and what happened to those children in terms of their survival or their loss. In a work such as On the Journey, we see the innocence of children dancing in front of trains, which of course are hugely symbolic for that epoch and that story. And in terms of journey, we see here a painting entitled 1947. It speaks to those immigrants after World War II, the first to arrive safely. And these are paintings of hope, of homecoming, and they have as much resonance today internationally, regardless of any specific story. And that indeed is, again, that point of departure for the viewer, whatever their experience may be. And in closing, we see a work, a remarkable monotype of this diorama. Ruth was given the privilege of going into a natural history museum when it was not open in Austria. And seeing this natural scene frozen in time that had been here for probably two centuries or a century and a half. And these are the artifacts of our time and our history as she reflects upon throughout her body of work.